Patients with pelvic pain, especially with acute pain, will likely present to you first. It's up to you to start evaluating their pain and determine what might be causing it. You will need to decide if it needs to be treated emergently or if they can be referred for an outpatient visit. But don't worry, in this chapter, I will help you by perfecting your workup. Now let's get started. Recall from the previous lesson that different causes have different ways of presenting. Ask clarifying questions that might help clue you into the cause. First, you want to determine the location of their pain. Is it suprapubic, where their bladder lies? Is the pain on one side, or both? Next, determine when the pain occurs. Do they have pain with voiding? Is it constant, or does it come and go? Does anything make it worse, or better? Does intercourse affect the pain? Is it associated with their period? Did it occur suddenly or gradually worsen over time? Do they have any associated symptoms such as bleeding, urinary urgency, or fevers? You can suspect infectious causes of pelvic pain such as a UTI, PID, TOA, or salpingitis if the history includes fevers, chills, and generally not feeling well. They may also be accompanied by symptoms of urgency and or burning with voiding. The patient's symptoms may worsen gradually, but it's also possible for them to get worse acutely. Remember, even after the patient has answered questions about their symptoms, you will need to perform an abdominal exam and a pelvic exam. An abdominal exam allows you to assess if they have an acute abdomen, which includes things like rebound pain when you release palpation or guarding of the abdomen when you attempt to palpate. Look for any lesions on the external genitalia. If lesions are present, note whether they are tender or non-tender to touch. When you perform a speculum exam, if you see purulent fluid coming from the cervix or discharge in the vagina that is discolored or malodorous, that should concern you for an infection. This is likely an STI, a sexually transmitted infection. You should collect a sample to test for gonorrhea, chlamydia, trichomonas, yeast, and bacterial vaginosis. If you haven't already asked, this should prompt you to ask about a history of STI and or about high-risk sexual exposure. Also check for cervical motion tenderness known as the chandelier sign. Take a large swab and press on the cervix. If the patient is tender with this, PID is likely the cause of the pain. Finally, ask when their last menstrual period was. Knowing the patient's last menstrual period, or LMP, is important because where they are in their menstrual cycle will be helpful to know if you get a pelvic ultrasound. This is critical because occasionally, normal changes that occur through the menstrual cycle can be mistaken as abnormal on imaging. An important takeaway, you need to also get a pregnancy test at the beginning of the workup. If the patient is pregnant, you will follow another algorithm and plan. And of course, I will review that in another MedMastery lesson.